We get a lot of very interesting questions here on YouTube and a lot of them are about what will my battery operated inverter run and believe it or not this Milwaukee top off probably tops the charts as far as what people think they should be able to run off of a very small battery operated inverter. I get questions daily. Will this run my corded drill? No, but it'll run a battery operated drill. Why won't it run my corded drill? Will it run a coffee maker? No, but, and then I think there's other people out there that are touting it to run a few more things that it will. But either way, I have a pre-production unit here. This is a 2000 watt inverter. This one's got some things going on with it that are very interesting. So we're gonna use this to show you what battery operated inverters will run. We're gonna go through coffee makers, convection ovens, heat guns. We're gonna even talk about how long they will run them. And let me tell you, gas is not dead. Stay tuned. All right, guys, before we get into it, I think it's important to know what we're dealing with here so you can look at times and voltages and a lot of different things. This is an Ocatel P2001. It's going to be coming out on Kickstarter. We've had this for a while. We're um, trying to just give them some ideas of what we'd like to see and different nuances about this machine so they can get it perfect when it goes out. This unit here is rated at 2000 watts sustainable and 4000 watts peak, which I think, you know, the, that's a little bit of a push, but either way, that's what it's rated at. It is a 2000 watt hour battery on the inside. So what that means is at full draw, 2000 watt hours, that's what it can put out in one hour. And we can kind of prove some of that here. Now the screen went dim on me. I'm just going to wake it up here. Hopefully maybe not. There we go. So currently it's putting out 110 volts, which some of these companies will play with the voltage a little bit to get higher Watts because we all know volts times amps equals Watts. And if we lower the voltage, things can, we can put more things in it. We lower amps on units. This is a 1400 Watt heat gun at 120 volts. So it is somewhere around 11.66 amps. When we turn it on here at 110, you get very little voltage drop, but our watt output goes to 1161. And at about 1150, if we just rounded down a little bit, this would make this 10.45 amps. But the important part to see here is that this unit if we trust it here, the remaining discharge, and usually these are optimistic, is 80 minutes. So we could run this heat gun or we can run this unit at just a smidge over half capacity and this will die in an hour and 20 minutes. A lot of these battery powered units will actually tell you they're great for the job site. And in some cases they are, if you're just going to run a computer or if you're going to run off of the 12 volt side or USBs, they really are a lot more efficient and you can use them for long periods of time, especially if you're running like a 12 volt refrigerator or anything like that. These work great. But if you're going to use like a higher powered tool, that's going to use some serious amp draw. We're not even going to cut with this. We're just going to turn it on, watch what happens with the Watts and make sure that it'll handle just the initial draw of starting the saw. But you'll see quickly that this really pushes these units quite a bit. So our initial watt output was right around 1250 and we were not even cutting. So once we really started to dive into a cut in the power usage or draw in amps goes up, this will really start to peak out quickly. And while this unit will run this, it's not going to give you a long run period for it. So using this all day in a job site would simply not work. One of the huge advantages of having a power bank or battery operated generator like this is that they're quiet. So using them at a tailgating function or while you're out camping makes them a great choice. 
Now you pay for it a little bit in the cost, but uh, they work. But if you want to use them for something larger, like this convection oven, we have it set up for 350 degrees, 30 minutes. Turn this guy on, and you can see that we had a huge watt output jump, and then it came back down, settled at 1422, and you can see our remaining discharge time is really going down quickly. Volts is staying pretty fair at uh, 109.6. I'd really like to see that at more of a 118, 120, but we're gonna go with it at this point in time. And you have to remember this has to heat up first. It's not just gonna instantly get to 350. So it's gonna do its thing and go through everything. We have an hour-ish of runtime here. And I say ish because these things are kind of like the, uh, your miles left till empty on your car. They're always sometimes optimistic and then when they get down to the end, they bounce around. But the reality is, is this is pretty optimistic for this unit because we have to consider heat in the batteries that will discharge it. We have to consider its efficiency and a lot of different things that are gonna happen. But the reality here, we'll let this go for a little bit just to see what happens to the runtime. But I'll tell you, this stuff really doesn't last as long as you would expect, mostly because of the wattage. So this is ran for five minutes. We finally turned off just a little bit ago where we hit 350, we dropped down to a 30 watt output. Uh, but just to show you in the five minutes, we've dropped less than the five minutes on this discharge remaining, but we've dropped like 3%, 4% of the total battery. So that's why I kind of go back and forth between, you know, the ratings of how long it'll last and what's going on here. I'm hoping this guy will turn back off a little bit and drop down. That's the only thing that's going to save you with one of these battery uh, generators while you're cooking is that maybe you won't need the full heating element power all the time. And that's where a crock pot seems to really work decent because they, they turn on and off and you can usually get them to last maybe an hour and a half. But again, this is on a 2000 watt hour battery pack with a 2000 watt inverter. So if you think about what you need here, when you're purchasing a battery powered inverter, you need a lot. For example, I know that the Ego would run this and you can see here we just, uh, the heating element turned off, we dropped down. The Ego would run this. The Ryobi 40 volt would not run this unit at all. It wouldn't even turn it on. It would flip it uh, off. The, uh, what other ones are there out there? Uh, the the Blue D AC 200 runs this without issue. That one seems to be one of the better ones out there uh, as far as what's going on and their voltage and what you can do with it. Uh, People complain that it's all touch screen and doesn't have buttons, but at the same point in time, the AC200 is awesome for that. Let's move on to something else and continue trying things out. Coffee is probably one of our most requested items. Can I run a coffee maker off my top off? <laughs> and you can see here, almost 1200 watts output just for this Keurig to start heating up. And that's what we need. So uh, you need a 1500 watt easy battery power generator to create what's needed to run this small coffee maker. Now, if you were to run a larger one with a pot, they're gonna take even more than that. So you have to look at what you're buying and all this stuff has its watts listed on the back. And usually when you have something like this, it's gonna run a little lower voltage. So you can sneak by with some of the watts. But with that said here, if we were making a lot of coffee, it says 72 minutes max. That's, you know, an, an interesting run time per se here. I'm gonna to try to run through this cup of coffee. It, and I'm not trying to bag it all on battery operated generators. I just think you need to be realistic with the amount of time that you expect it to run something. And that I think is, is very important. So if you know the, the total watt hours of the battery, and then you can look at the wattage of the unit and then know that they have at least 10% of their efficiency is lost in the conversion from DC to AC, I mean, that seems realistic. 
where this guy is a uh, 2,000 watt hour unit. So if we take 90% of it drop, you know, 200 watt hours off, we got 1,800 watt hours of usable time. And we are seeing that if we were putting out 1,800 watts, we were be, you know, near one hour's runtime if we had a absolutely full battery. So this guy's taking quite some time to heat up here. And I guess that's something else to consider while you're using this at a little bit lower voltage. Some of this stuff isn't going to just produce the heat as it would before, but you can see we're dropping now in our output. So we've finally hit this. We can start running coffee. There we go. And since the water is heated here, we have an output that's next to nothing for watts. Everything is warm. But once it turns on again, that wattage usage will come back up right there. So coffee is definitely possible if you have a large enough unit. So my purpose in this video was more to educate and maybe give you some reality as to what to expect with a battery operated inverter. When you get to a point of expecting too much from these, mostly because of the price that they are, I mean this could be a $2,000 unit sitting here, you expect it to be able to cook your dinner or you know, do something crazy. And even worse, there are videos out there of this particular unit charging a Tesla. And as a Tesla owner myself, I can tell you that this is not going to do a really great job at doing anything for me in my Tesla because the lowest Tesla charger I can have is going to be close to 1800 watts, which is going to be 120 volts times 15 amps. And at that speed, I'm going to get four miles an hour. So that means if this ran for, for one hour, I would get four miles of charge. That does mean nothing, four miles. I mean, that could get me somewhere, I guess, four miles down the road, but it would take an hour plus to do so, and that's not realistic at this point in time. So what does work and what is cool about these is if you're using them to run really small things, this is a heavier unit, but you can hook up a solar panel. It will actually charge the battery at the same time it is outputting. That works great, but know that you can really only solar charge at maybe 500 watts-ish max, and you're gonna have to have a perfect day and you're gonna invest a couple hundred multiple hundred dollars into solar panels and then have them all sitting out. So in some cases it works and in some cases it doesn't. Great for vans where you can mount solar panels on the top and have everything charge in and go out. And don't get me wrong, they have their use, but for a generator, for a home power, for charging an EV or anything like that, these things don't really work that well. If you put a refrigerator in, plugged into them, make sure that when that refrigerator turns off and there's very little electricity running, that these units don't just click off either after 20, 30 minutes of no power usage because they want to conserve the battery. It's a lot different than running gas. And a lot of times we see the gas is dead, you know, everything out there, even with battery operated cars. And as a battery operated car owner, I can tell you, I need a gas vehicle next to me for the different trips, especially when it gets cold in Michigan. You simply cannot do a long trip in a battery operated vehicle because your miles that you can go is significantly diminished due to the cold. You're running heaters on the inside of the car, all that stuff. Same stuff goes here. Spend your money wisely. You only have so much of it and while you might really like this and use it and it might fit you perfect, there are some that might want to buy this and it doesn't fit them. Hopefully we've cleared some of that up. Thank you for listening to me ramble for the last couple of minutes about this stuff, but I'm really trying to get some more information out there. I always appreciate your time. Give us a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.